Hey everyone, welcome back to my uh, apartment workshop. Didn't Cake say there wasn't going to be a video this weekend? Thought I remembered that. Today I'm working on our battery management system. Uh, it just arrived in the mail. Uh, I had to order it from Europe. Uh, it actually came from Czechoslovakia. And it's from a company called 123 Electric. And I think they're based in the Netherlands. This is the 123 Smart BMS. And I like this setup because it has a pretty simple circuit board. You put one on each one of your battery cells and then it connects through Bluetooth to your phone uh, with a nice little app. So I'll show you a close-up of the screen in a second. Um, yeah, what I've got going on here is just a simulation of two battery cells. So I've got a power supply and each one of these sets of wires is acting like a battery putting out 3.2 volts and they're connected to the circuit boards um, so if you have more than two cells in your battery like i'm going to have four you'll have four circuit boards of course if you do parallel combinations you don't need one circuit board for each in parallel so yeah, if you're interested in all that, go to their website. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below and they explain all that. I'm going to keep it simple here and just kind of demonstrate. So I've got this connected. Uh, these guys here are current sensors. So if a wire passes through here, it can sense how much current is um, passing through that wire. This is for the charge current, so it's the amount of current that would be going into the batteries. Since I don't really have a battery, I don't have a charger hooked up to this. But over here, I have the output wire going to this flashlight head, and it is sensing the current going through the flashlight head. So, um, if I turn on the flashlight, It's saying I'm drawing 0 0.43, 0 0.42 amps here on my meter. And here on the dashboard of the app, it says the same thing, 0.4 amps. If I turn this up to higher brightness, I have 1.83. And here it's saying 1.8. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty clever little system. Let me get you the close-up here on this. Get it focused. Yeah, so at the top you have what your solar panel is putting into the battery cells. And here are the battery cell statistics. And then at the bottom is how much power is going out of the system. And if I go over to my cells, you can see I've got two battery cells. There's their voltages and their temperatures. And then you've also got a log. Yeah, no log entries because I really haven't done anything yet. So anyway, it's a, yeah, it's a clever little system. I like it pretty well. And this is what we're going to use to monitor the batteries on the boat. Get you refocused on something here. There we go. Yeah, so... Our batteries are going to be lithium iron phosphate and as of right now, uh, the middle of 2020, uh, I feel that those, that chemistry of battery is right at the intersection of cost and capacity and safety and size. So that's, that's what I chose. Um, you know, you, everyone has their own needs, uh, but lithium iron phosphate seems like the, the right thing uh, for our boat. So that's going to be our house battery bank. Uh, I've ordered a set of eight cells, 500 amp hours each. Uh, I'll have four of them in series, that'll make 12 volts, and two sets of four in parallel. So that'll give us 12 volts 
1,000 amp hours. So that's a, a pretty serious amount of battery. And uh, yeah, it, it didn't cost me very much. I paid $700 for those and that, that that's pretty great. I mean, if you look at the kind of lead acid form factor lithium batteries out there that you can get, uh, you get about 100 amp hours out of those and they cost somewhere around $200 a piece. So yeah, you, you can spend a lot of money on those kind of batteries. Now, inside of those are battery management systems already. And you can argue that, you know, you're, you're getting that in the price, but for me, the, the cost still didn't come out the same. Um, yeah, and these guys also have uh, smartness built in, so if you try and overcharge it, it's got a little relay that you can use to stop your charger, and if you're drawing too much current, it's got another one that can, you know, turn off your inverter or open circuit the battery if you have a load switch. So uh, this battery management system was fantastic and I knew I wanted to use it and I found the cells that work really well with it and they happen to be a great price. So uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna go with. And this isn't gonna be installed in the boat very soon <laughs> because we still have to get it painted and uh, you know, there's electronics that need to be purchased to put into it and all that kind of stuff. But um, this is a big piece of what makes a boat livable though is the energy that you have available for cooking, for lighting, you know, for entertainment. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to see this working. Let's go and have a look at a very simplified <laughs> schematic of the electric system. Um, this is going to be kind of a temporary system until all of the interior is done and I get a feel for how we're going to use the boat. So. Yeah, let me turn this off and we'll go and look at that. Alright, so here's what we got for our schematic. Uh, the simplest piece of this right now is engine. Our diesel engine is just going to have its own 12 volt lead acid battery. Um, I'm not going to try and interconnect that with our solar system for now. Um, yeah, I just want to keep things simple and get this boat into the water and sailing. And that's not a very complicated interconnection, but it does complicate the wiring and routing in the boat. So for now, we're just going to pretend that the diesel engine isn't going to be a part of the solar system, the house batteries. So, uh, we've got wonderful sunshine that comes into solar panels. Uh, I'm planning on having two 12 volt, 350 watt solar panels. So I'm going to connect those in series. So it'll be putting out 24 volts, 350 watts, and it'll come into our uh, maximum power point tracking charger so pretty standard charger these days if you're not using maximum power point tracking on your solar charging you're missing out uh, so that's gonna use all of the available power coming out of the solar panels and put it into our battery bank so this here represents the lithium iron phosphate batteries I've only shown four cells there's actually going to be eight of them um, but this is basically the connection. The batteries will have uh, two cells. So if you imagine each one of these cells is actually two in parallel, they'll have one of those battery management boards on each one of those pairs of battery cells. And that'll allow me to monitor each cell of the battery even though there's really two cells per circuit board it looks like one cell just a larger capacity cell since they're in parallel um, yeah so that'll give me the the current usage and the charging statistics um, 
all that kind of juicy goodness, any errors, temperature problems, things like that that I'm having. So there'll be a current sensor on this yellow line coming from the solar charger that will tell me how much current comes into the batteries charging it. And there'll be another current sensor on this 12 volt line going out to the inverter um, that will tell me how much power is going out of there. Now, also I haven't shown here there's a lot of 12 volt systems on the boat in general, like all the lighting, planning on running that just straight off of the 12 volts, uh, the electronics, most of our, you know, sensors, um, GPS, things like that will all be run off of the 12 volt systems. So that's not shown here for simplicity, um, but that'll be hanging off of here. And that current sensor will also catch all of the, the current usage from those devices. So here we've got an inverter. Right now I'm planning on using the Victron uh, 3 kilowatt inverter. And also I'm planning on using their solar charger as well. Um, yeah, so the inverter turns 12 volt battery into 120 volt, like what comes out of your wall socket at the house. So that's basically what it's doing. Uh, the shore power here comes in. It has an isolation transformer. So um, there's a whole science of electrolysis and noise and craziness and weird things that happen if you just plug power from the shore straight into your boat. Um, yeah, lots of weird things happen. So this isolation, and that's a huge thing to have for protection. Um, yeah, uh, especially for electrolysis on boats. Any of your metal parts that are hanging into the water, um, if you don't have this, they can get eaten away by corrosion in just no time at all, like days sometimes, maybe even hours if it's bad enough. And that all happens from different types of currents flowing back and forth in ways that you don't want them to. So isolation transformer is a key piece of safety equipment um, to have. So the shore power can come in and can power the inverter, which powers, actually it's not really powering, it's just passing it straight through here. And uh, that can power your house power instead of drawing power off your back. Um, that's the basic, very, very basic schematic of our uh, boat's electrical system. And this is gonna evolve as we go, but uh, that's what we got for now. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this short little video and I will see you for some boat work next time.